Hi and welcome back to another video from Effective Dashboards. In this video we will be looking at the bullet chart and how we can use a bullet chart to display availability information related to critical equipment. Okay, so if we just start off with the requirements here. So we've got a data model and this is really the data model. It's just three columns, you have seven bits of equipment here and each one has got the availability for the rolling 12 months. Okay, now I've just entered that information straight into the data model. Keep an eye out if you're watching this video in the future because I will create a, a video explaining how you would calculate this from the actual underlying data, but for just now it's just all about the displaying of the information. Uh, the other one here we've got is the target availability and we can see each unit has got a different target availability. Okay, so this one's 95, this one's um, 95, this one's 91, 93. So each one of these has got a different target availability figure. Now what we want to do is we want to review that information and we want to review it on, um, and, and pick out the ones, easily pick out the ones that are below their target. Okay, where this availability over the last 12 months is below the target figure. And then we want to be able to then make an, make some sort of intervention and start to look at how we can get this figure back up to close to or above its target. So we've done a, a bar chart here. So this is one of these cluster bar charts and we can see it works fine. Now, the only issue we've got here is when it comes to conditional formatting and displaying the target. Now you can actually display the target with a pop-up. So what I've done there is um, is really straightforward. All I've done is add in the target availability to this tooltip here. And if you hover above here, you can see that target availability is 95%. Um, so you can do that, but it's not very visual. You can't see it on, on, on the screen. The next problem we've got with this chart is that Unless you want to use some reasonably complicated ducks um, measures to calculate the conditional formatting, out of the box you can only set one target for the whole chart. So if I go in here and look at the whether we data colors here, now you can go in and if I go and open this up, we can see here that we've set this up to be red if it's greater than 93%. Now you can't link, the, uh, using this for option here, you can't link a target to an individual piece of equipment, okay? Now you can using the option where we use a measure, which is here, and if define a measure, those are your actual calculating, calculation for conditional formatting. Now again, I've got a course on that. Check the link below. Um, I'm not gonna go into in, any in any detail just now, but you can do it. It's just a little bit more complicated. However, there is a visualization that allows us to achieve both ends, a target for each one of these, and also to display that target on screen. And that is the bullet chart visualization. And that's what we're gonna cover in this video today. Now there's actually a reasonable amount of, um, amount of, um, configuration involved in setting up one of these bullet charts. So I'll probably split this into two or three videos, but for the first video, we're gonna cover just installing this and setting up some of the basic settings. So I'm gonna create a new page here. Um, we'll just call it bullet. In fact, we'll just call it bullet. And what I've done here is I've gone in, and this isn't something that's available through the standard options here, the standard visualization. So if I had to go in and download the get more visuals, select it, select it from here, and we've had to get it from the app store. So the one that is displayed straight away is this bullet chart here. Now, I, I think that's okay, but I actually personally have worked with both of them, but I think if you type in bullet and search there, I think this one is actually better. So you just click on this one here, bullet chart by OK Viz, and click on add, and that will add that in here. Okay, take a look at the other one as well, but I think this one's got slightly more options. Both have got pros and cons, and you can get some options in one that you can't in the others, but on balance, this one is a, is a good one for me. So let's add it in. And we're just going to move it down a little bit and make it slightly bigger. So if we look at the fields that are available to pull into this, we've got a category, we've got a value, we've got a comparison value, we've got the target, 
we've got some states and we've got the tooltips. So quite a few different fields that are available here. So we'll keep it simple to begin with and what we'll add in is the value. So the, tar the value is going to be our target availability. Now this would probably normally be a measure of some sort but for just now we're just going to add that in as the target availability. Uh, yep, and then the value we're gonna we're gonna look at here. So that that is said value, but this is a target, okay. And then we'll put in the value. It's gonna be this here again. That would probably be a, a measure, but we'll just leave it leave it as that for just now. Um, now the other thing we're gonna pull in is a category, okay. And that category is gonna be our piece of equipment. Okay. Now we can see what's happened here is it split the categories. Okay, so you could only, you could pull in one category if you wanted to, or if you just had one if you just had one data set and you were happy to review that, then 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 great. It might have been costs for the particular site, um, but we've done it by category here because our particular requirement is to see the values for each of these seven machines. So straight away we can see there's a few things have been added. So we've got the target here. Um, we can see the tooltip. I'm going to switch off that tooltip for just now because it's going to get a little bit annoying popping up and down. So we'll go in here and we'll switch off this tooltip. And we're just going to go through some of the settings here. So general is the normal stuff here. The only option that's in here that's worth looking at is you can go and you can actually set this to be a vertical display, which could be useful in some cir circumstances, um, certainly or you can get horizontal display, but let's leave it horizontal. I like that because these kind of read a little bit better. And you may also have the actual description of the, the piece of equipment as well, so that people can recognize it when they see it, rather than just the tag number. So we'll leave it at horizontal. You can play about with the size of the bullet points, but I generally I've found you just leave it as it is just now, and they will scale as you increase and decrease the size here. But you can set an upper and lower limit that allows you to stop it um, as you as you stretch this, it stops it becoming any bigger or stops it becoming any smaller. But for those, we'll just leave it like that for just now. The next one is the category. Nothing really in here. You can choose the name. Um, the access. So the one thing I would do in here is this access value here will be will inherit the the conditional the the actual um, decimal places of the values that are displayed. Now we do want the values to be displayed with two decimal places, but we don't want this to have two decimal places. So you can override it here and just put in zero decimal places here. That just tidies it up a little bit. Um, so as we move down, we switch on the display labels. So we want them to be displayed here. They're, they're okay, but I would say that because we've got these target lengths here, so these black lengths are the targets, sometimes they don't quite align themselves to either the left or the right of the target, which is a little bit um, a little bit annoying because it kind of obscures the number a little bit. But ultimately, you can see the targets. Now, there's another option here that allows you to display the difference between. Okay, so change over. And what you can do is you can show the difference of the change over its target. So this one here is 0.5% over its target. This one here is 4.4% over. This one here is 1% um, is over. But again, the values are kind of not being particularly well displayed here. In fact, this is only showing, yeah, only showing the change over. Okay, so it's only showing the ones that are over. Um, so it might might be useful. I'm not going to show it just now. I'm just going to leave that off for just now, and I just want to see the target there. Next, we've got the data colors. I'm just going to change that color to something a little bit less in your face than that blue color. Yeah, let's choose this color here. I think that will start to look a little bit better, particularly when we actually use some conditional formatting. So you can change the color there. And then this one here, conditional formatting. So we'll come back to that in a second. Target markers, you can decide if you want to see a line or the circle or the square here. So the cross is not particularly great. The circle is, is okay. 
the square again I like the it kind of shows it's like is at the top of the square or the bottom of the square it kind of leaves it a little bit open there I think the line is great and you can change the colour of that line but for just now I'm just going to leave it as black just for it to stand out uh, states will cover again later on but everything else is more or less the same you can add in a legend uh, there is a little bit of an issue with that legend um, when it comes to displaying the state values so the states are these sort of subtle colours that are sitting behind the value here now I'd like to be able to see those in the legend so we know what they mean what bandings they are now that is the possible now I notice it is possible to, to add in a um, add them to the legend if you get the purchased version of this which um, if you search for bullet chart you'll find it was a third version that was available um, so if you want to pay for that then great I think there's a workaround that we can cover possibly in another video that will allow us to see that but for just now we've got this value set up um, fairly easy fairly straightforward and we can see all the different targets most importantly now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cover setting up conditional formatting so we're going to click on here we're going to go back to our format option and we're going to go to conditional colors and this is really easy so set if availability rolling and that's going to be 12 months is less than the target availability which is what we need for each one of these then we want to add this red color in and here we can see we've now got a different target for each one of these and it's conditionally formatted based on that target not a blanket target for everything so this overcomes the first issue where we've got that we had with the the bar chart the cluster bar chart that we showed earlier and that we only we could only set certainly without the out the box we could only set the targets for the whole um, the whole chart in terms of conditional formatting now we've set a target for each one of these and we've been able to conditionally format the bars based on that target so that's great and then the second um, aspect that it shows is the actual target itself so now we can see how close or how far we are from the target so this is a, a bullet chart it's um, it's in my opinion really really smart really nice it shows a lot of information um, in this video here we've covered how to set it up the key fields that we need to put in place and how to carry out some conditional formatting in the next video I'm going to cover setting up these state values here okay because that is another element of the bullet chart and these allow you to see how far or how how far you are um, from the target and whether that is good or whether that is bad thanks for listening to this video if you like it then press the subscribe button and give it a thumbs up if you like it as well and i'll talk to you in the next video